Welcome to a tutorial video on 22.6. In this video, I'm going to talk about data structures, and particularly data structures array within Harlow 3.3. So in the previous videos, as we've been progressing through different concepts related to Harlow and related to Twine, we've been generally working with single values, a whole number, decimal numbers, or the keywords true or false. We also though, can work with values in relation to each other as part of a collection of different values. We call these data structures within programming terminology. And within Harlow, we have access to three different data structures as influenced by its parent language, JavaScript. One of these and the most common data structure we will encounter is called an array. An array is a sequence of values where the order of the entries in the array are important. And we're particularly key into that word entries. We are interested in things within some type of collection called entries. And when we work with arrays in particular, we're interested in their order, where their order is important. Now, when we work with data structures in Harlow, in particular, and working with arrays, the repetition of values is not particularly important. We can have the same value repeated multiple times, different values for all of them, and we can mix and match different kinds of values. We can have numbers and strings and various other things within an array, and that is perfectly safe. This is not true, however, when we work with other data structures, but those will be covered in other videos. So let's work through the various things we get with arrays within Harlow, starting with the macro we use to create them. Now, we can create arrays within Harlow using two different possible macros. The first is A, and the second is the word array. You will see throughout this video, I tend to just use A as a shortcut macro to doing the same thing, but array is also valid. So let's go ahead and look at the first example I have, example one right here. Notice I'm using A, as I just mentioned, to create an array within Harlow. Notice it has three values separated by commas. Notice a comma between the first and the second, and another comma between the second and third, but not a comma at the end. And so this has three entries within this, and this is an array. Let's go ahead and start the story from here. And we'll notice it will show us right there, the values, plural, within this collection. Notice it is a structure of data, A, B, and C, again, without the comma at the very end. Well, those that's all fine and good, but what if we wanted to actually do something with array? Well, we create an array using either the A or array macros. Once we have it, we then need to do something with it. So something else we can do when we create variables within Harlow is we can actually store data structures at the same time. The variable, as I mentioned in a previous video, is just a bucket for other things. One of the things it can hold, along with other values we have seen, like whole numbers, decimal numbers, and the keyword true and false, is it can hold data structures. Again, it's just a bucket to hold things for us. So let's move over to example two. Example two looks similar to example one. We're still using the same right here, array macro, A, B, and C, but in this case, we're saving it to a temporary variable right here. We're setting the temporary variable to the array right here of A, B, and C, and so this entire structure will then be in this value right here. Now we're moving over here to my second line right here, and we're introducing a new keyword. So all arrays have access to a keyword called length. The length of an array is the number of entries within it. And this is often incredibly important because we need to know how many things are in this collection. And so the way we access that is through new keyword length. However, there's also a little bit of extra syntax, a little bit of extra grammar when we access keywords pertaining to arrays in particular. And that is this possessive S right here, this single quotation and letter S. When we're working with keywords, particularly working with keywords and arrays, we can say it right here as the arrays, notice possessive S following an English pattern, and then some type of keyword. So possessive S's length, in this case, the length of the array. And so we see arrays length written out that and phrased within English. So in this case right here, we want to set example length, temporary variable, notice the underscore, to the array's length, the length of the array, and then we can get it right here. So we are creating an array, and then we are getting its length right after that. And then we are showing the value of the variable right here. So let's go ahead and move over to start the story of example two. 
and the length is 3. And that's true. We have A, B, and C, three entries in this array for a total length of 3. Let's say potentially we were interested in something that's within the array. Now, when we start to talk about arrays, there's two general questions that we usually ask. One, at this particular position, what is the value of this entry? That's question one. Question two, general questions here. Question two is, is this value contained within the array? So you'll notice that as we move through the examples, we're kind of going to be revisiting these two general questions. There are other questions we could ask. Things like what is the length of the array that we did with example two, but generally we're interested in at this position, again, where order is important, what is the value? And alternatively, is this value within this collection? So if we were interested in a particular position right here, we would first create an array, then save it to a variable. Again, reusing that idea of a variable as a bucket, it just contains other things. And then right here, we're interested in a particular position. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky, and I'm going to move into talking about slightly more technical terms for just a moment. So Harlow, as we know, is built on a parent language, JavaScript. In JavaScript, the positions of an array start with zero. This is not true in Harlow. In Harlow, the first position is one. So we see here, if we want to get access to A, the first thing in the array, then the very first position is 1. This is not true in JavaScript, where the first position is 0. If you're coming into this video or coming to Harley with previous knowledge of JavaScript, just kind of set that particular um, instance aside for a second. Notice we're continuing this possessive S, right, that we just saw in example 2, now into example 3. So we're interested in what is the position. Now notice the position is an open and closed parentheses. And so we're, what is the array's first position, phrased in English. And so the value at position one should be A, and if we go ahead and move to start the story from example three, it's A. Notice that we did not start with zero, we started with one. Again, remembering that despite the fact that JavaScript starts with zero, Harlow starts with one. Well, that's all well and good, and we can continue to get create arrays, get the length, and get the position, again, at this position, what is this value is one of the questions we ask of arrays. What if we wanted to do something else with arrays? Well, one of the things we can do is we can get a random entry within an array. And this is incredibly powerful for some advanced patterns we'll talk about in another video. Sometimes we want to create a whole bunch of possible things and then just get one of them at random and then do something with that. But again, we'll talk about that in a future video. However, we want to kind of see that knowledge in this video and get used to kind of thinking about that pattern, let's go ahead and prepare us right here in example four. So notice previously we used length and we've used position and it's follow this possessive s after the name of the value or the name of the variable. So right here we're doing something a little bit different. We're creating another array, but this time we're creating an array of possible merchant greetings. And then we're using the keyword random right here to get a random entry within this collection. And again, as I mentioned, this can be incredibly powerful because we can prepare a large possible list of things, randomly get those entries from those arrays, and then do combinations with them. And we'll revisit that in a future video. But for right now, let's look at example four. We want to go ahead and start example four right here. Go ahead and play. As you enter, the merchant says, goods for gold, stranger. Go ahead and refresh. Goods for gold, goods for gold. And then we'll play it again. And notice we get a separate entry, we'll play it again, and we got, got coin to spend. Notice every time I restarted the story, we get a different random value from this. And of course, if we wanted more, we could add more to this particular array. Okay, so, so far we've created arrays using the A macro. We could have alternatively used the array, uh, array macro itself instead of the A macro. Right here, we've saved the values and gotten its length using that possessive S form within Harlow. So it's length. And then we notice right here, we can get its particular position of things. So the length and position, we can also get random entries from it. So let's talk a little bit more about working with arrays as a structure in, a, in and of themselves. Sometimes we want to test, hey, is this value in this particular array? Again, part of those two questions we think of when we pair them with arrays. We are interested in at this position, what is this value? 
And we're also interested in, is this value in this collection? So we do that in Harlow with now a third keyword, contains, although this keyword will follow us into other structures we'll talk about in future videos. So in this case, we're creating a new array right here, A, B, and C, just following the example. And then we're interested, hey, if this value is in this other thing, or put another way, if the array contains this value, and in this case, it contains A. So let's go ahead and run example five, and then we'll loop back. Start from here, example five. It contains A, and it does. So notice that it will go through and compare each individual entry within the array and test to see if the thing we ask for is contained within it, and in this case it is. Keep track of this word contains, because again, it will appear in future videos as we revisit the two other data structures available to us. But in this particular example, again, if this array contains this value, this, and it does, it will show us this. So let's look at two more things we want to do with arrays. Sometimes we want to add entries to an array, and sometimes we want to remove entries from an array. And these come with a little bit of more things we need to be made aware of. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to example six. And example six gets a little more lines of code because we're kind of working with arrays. So the very first thing I'm going to do is create an array. Again, save it to that bucket, save it to that variable. Then I'm going to create something I want to add to an array. And then I want to actually add it. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. The only things we can add to arrays is other arrays. However, we can make an array whenever we need to. So in this particular example, in this line I've highlighted right here, what we're doing is we're creating an array, creating the value, or alternatively we might already have the value we want to add to that array, add to that collection. And then right here we are creating an array made of that value, and then we can follow the example we've already seen with single values, and we can add to it. So it plus something, and in this case it plus a single array, or an array with a length of, of one, with the other existing value we want, add them together, and down here we would see it does, because by this point it does contain them. So we can add things to an array, but they have to be in an array itself. It's a little bit complicated and it can be slightly frustrating, but keep in mind only arrays can affect other arrays. So let's go ahead and play example six, and we will look at this. It does, and as we showed, it does. So we can create an array, and we can add values as long as we remember that arrays affect arrays. So keep that in mind as we now move into this last example, arrays affect arrays. So previously we just saw that we can add, using the addition symbol, one array to another and it will combine it into a single new array. Now moving into example seven, what if we wanted to subtract or remove potential entries from an array? Where well, here's where things get a little bit more complicated. Because we can still do this, but the outcome might be slightly different than what we might expect. So just start here with what I've highlighted, walking through, we're creating an array, this first line, creating a second array, this second line, and then we're going to do something a little bit strange. So again, we're going to subtract, notice right here, subtract the minus symbol, or a hyphen, and then we're going to subtract the same thing again. Now I want to point out something kind of interesting. Notice I said towards the beginning of this video that potentially we could have the same repeating values within some structure, and that's totally fine. So in the first line here, I have A, B, and C, but in the second line, I have A, A, and A, and that is okay within an array. Again, it can hold anything that Harlow is aware of. Strings, keywords, true and false, whole numbers, decimal numbers, whatever else we're doing. It can also potentially hold other data structures, but that's a slightly more advanced pattern. So notice though, in these second two lines, right here, three and four, that we are removing the A value from the array. Now when we move, remove the A value from that first array, A, B, and C, it will leave B and C. In the second case though, if we remove A, it will remove A, A, and A, leaving nothing remaining. So this is the thing we need to be made aware of when we use subtraction and we attempt to remove values, remove entries from an array, is that anything matching that thing we're asking it to remove will also be removed because it's not looking for unique values, it's, or it's looking for unique values and anything that's matching that unique values will also be removed. Let's go ahead and play example seven and we will look at that. 
And we see over here, example value is B and C. Notice A removed. However, example value array two, that is, is nothing because we removed A, which removed A, A, and A. And so it is nothing left. So let me review everything I've talked about when we work with arrays. Array is one of three different data structures we have available within Harlow. I'll cover the other two in a special video and then talk about all three of them in connection in an additional video. When we work with arrays, we care about the order. What is the position of things within the array? So as we've seen, we create an array. Then we will, when we want to work with the array as a structure, we need to save it as a variable, as we've done with a number of other variables in previous videos. So we create an, create an array, save it to the value of a variable. Again, thinking about variables as just buckets containing things. And then we also have access to two new keywords introduced in this video. We can get the array's length, the number of entries within the array, and random, a random entry from the existing array. We can also test to see what's in the array using the keyword contains, which will again follow us into future videos talking about other data structures available in Harlow. We've also seen how we can add to and remove from an array using the plus and minus symbols, working with our existing knowledge of how variables work. We can add to it and minus subtract from it in the same way we have previously done with single values, working with whole numbers. However, when we do this, we have to keep in mind that only arrays affect arrays. So if we want to add to an array, we have to create a new array and then add them together to combine into an existing new array. Same thing works with subtraction. We create an array and then we subtract it from a other existing array. Slightly more confusing when we're working with addition and subtraction, but easy to remember as again the phrase arrays affect arrays. And so that's all we need to remember as we're working through working with arrays in Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.